So just the other week, a trailer dropped for Wes Anderson's latest film, The French Dispatch. And it got me thinking, hey, I'd really like to make a Wes Anderson style short. And then I realized I don't have any friends. So let's see if I can make it by myself. To start off, we have to figure out what makes a Wes Anderson movie. Check it out, every shot split right down the middle with tons of vertical lines to really help frame the shot. Whip pans for days. He constantly has the camera panning around to follow the action or to bring us to our next point of interest. It doesn't matter whether it's someone laying out a plan, signing a piece of paper, or even a bloody sink. The top-down shot always makes an appearance in his films. He often uses this to let us feel the emotion of a character, positive or negative. It lets the audience sit with it for a moment and really accentuate every little movement. He has this incredible palette of color that he works with the production designer to help kind of make a theme for each movie. They just have a very specific look to them. Now that we know what the core elements are, I need to write a script to fit in those elements so that we can implement it into the story. Now I know that I'm gonna shoot this in my apartment, so I'm gonna scan around the environment and check for locations that could act as scenes. Right off the bat, I think of the yellow drapes in my living room. They have lots of great vertical lines and I can just kind of picture a character opening it in silhouette at the end of the movie as kind of our final shot. And the color gives us a nice theme for the movie. So now that we have the final shot figured out, how do we get there? What if it's about someone waiting outside the apartment to pick up our main character? He can talk to them through the intercom in my living room, which is right beside the doorless doorway. Actually, what? What is a doorless doorway called? According to Home Improvement Stack Exchange, a cased opening is a doorway that is trimmed out but does not contain a door. If you just want an opening in the wall without trim, you could just call it an opening or archway. Well, I guess that's the opening shot. <laughs> Next, I have to give the character a challenge to overcome. So what if he has to change his clothes? Well, then I guess the next shot should be in the bedroom with the closet and we can have him lay the clothes out on the bed for a top-down shot. So now we have the setup, I need to add a twist to kind of keep it exciting. So what if something happens to the suit he's gonna wear? What a twist! What if he ruins it by getting it wet? Yeah, so we could have him drop it in the sink. No, that's stupid. No, he's shaving. So he's shaving and he fills the sink full of water and he's hung the suit right above the sink. He then goes to hop into the shower and then it falls in. So then when he gets out of the shower later, he sees it and then he's kind of faced with the decision and his friend is talking to him on the intercom. So then it creates this dilemma of what am I gonna wear? How am I gonna get out of here? And that's how we get to our final scene where he's at the end and he's wearing this ridiculous outfit, which you'll see at the end of the video. And he's making the decision of, okay, I'm gonna go outside and this is what I gotta do. I'm just gonna go in with general goals for each scene. So we don't need a shot list or anything. It, it should be fine. Starting with the opening. I wanna make sure to get a wide and a tight shot of the opening so I can get some interaction with the intercom. I also need a shot of the intercom and I'd really like to showcase the drapes so we can see where everything's heading towards the end. I wanted to start the first shot off right and get myself in the dead center of the room for that very Wes Anderson look. Well, in my research, I was listening to an interview with Anderson's cinematographer, Robert Yeoman. With Wes Anderson, obviously, it's in a very symmetrical frame. We literally go into the locations and have my camera assistants measure out from the lens to the corners of the room to make sure the camera's placed dead center in the room. But for this shot, it's not in the center of the room, just the center of the doorway, so it's not as useful, but you get the idea. Now one of the biggest challenges of shooting by yourself is trying to keep the shot in focus, especially if your camera doesn't have autofocus like mine. So I figured out a trick. I use a light stand and set it to the height that I'm gonna be at and the position I wanna stand, and then I set my focus to that. I then take a strip of tape, put that down at the base of the stand, and boom, I have my mark. 
So after getting in focus, I shoot the tight shot and then move on to the intercom for a big exposition dump. And I figured this is a good chance to actually use a whip pan to show the drapes because they're actually located pretty close to each other. But the problem is for the intercom shot, I need a different lens and different camera position than I do for the drape shot. So what I plan to do is use a whip pan and hide a cut in the middle so I have to go really fast and it should be easy peasy. Well, the problem is when you're moving the camera so fast and you try to land on that mark without jerking the camera around, it's really hard, I discovered. I tried setting up a pole to bump into, I tried and tried and tried. <laughs> And then I looked up an interview with Robert where he said, The secret is uh, you find a really comfortable position with your feet and your body at the end position. So you start in a very uncomfortable position and then you come to that same position where you're comfortable. Go in the corkscrew at the beginning and then, and then you find it and you'll probably get it pretty much every time. And like that, that was the trick. That was the key to unlocking the perfect whip pan. So I nailed it and then immediately realized that I have a table full of camera crap right in the shot. So I had to do it again. And then after that, I realized that I totally forgot to get my wide shot. We don't need a shot list or anything. It, it should be fine. So I had to shoot that all over again. And then we were on to the bedroom. The main goal for the bedroom is to show the suit. The closet shot is a great chance to use the measuring tape to find the dead center of the closet. I then took all the extra clothes out just so we had one shirt, one pair of pants, and one suit jacket, just so it's simple. And so it sets down the idea that he literally doesn't have any other clothes. So it sets things up for later. And after that, it was a simple top-down shot of laying down some of the clothes and Next, we're running off to the bathroom. Main goals are entering the bathroom, starting shaving, getting in the shower, and the suit falling into the sink. So to make this work, I'm gonna have to walk into the bathroom and hang the suit right on the mirror over top of the sink, which I actually don't think anybody in real life would do, but you know, movie logic, so it works. It started out way too dark, so I had to run a light in and then realize that you can totally see the cameras in the mirrors. So I had to angle them in a little bit and stand in the middle so that you don't see the camera behind me. And after four takes, I got the perfect take. And immediately realized that the camera wasn't recording. About four more takes later, I got the shot and we were moving into the bathroom. From here, I got to do the top-down sink shot. And luckily, my fiance had just cut my hair the day before, so I had some hair in the garbage that I pulled out and kind of sprinkled like fairy dust into the sink. Kind of gross when I think about it now. <laughs> then the rest is pretty simple. A reverse shot for the shaving, almost break the camera, enter the shower, drop the suit, a couple whip pans, and basically just the other techniques we were using throughout the whole video. I'm gonna keep the rest of the video secret though, until the end. Next, I picked some music from some iconic Wes Anderson scenes and started cutting. But then I had to figure out what I was actually going to say in the intercom. That message in the intercom will give us all the info that we need to understand as an audience why Jimmy needs to make it out that door in five minutes and why he's rushing and, and making some of the decisions. So, why is he rushing? A wedding. He's rushing because he's going to a, his sister's wedding and his friend is waiting for him out at the front door. Jimmy's gonna wake up, he's gonna hear the teleprompter go off and the teleprompter is gonna say this. Hey Jimmy, you were supposed to be at your sister's wedding an hour ago. So that sets up that he has to go somewhere right now. That gives that sense of urgency. The ceremony starts in 30 minutes, and if you're not out that front door in five minutes, I'm leaving. And then the impetus to change the shirt comes from, if you're wearing that dumb blue shirt and sweatpants, I'm gonna lose it. Okay, I think we got something. The final piece of the puzzle was the color grade, and I won't bore you with all the technical mumbo jumbo, but I used the Juan Malara, Mal his name's right here, 
power grade of the Kodak 2383 as a starting point. And then I added some special sauce on there for that nice warm Royal Tenenbaums kind of look and boom. There it is. I also made that into a LUT, which you can download for free down in the description if you want to get those Wes Anderson vibes yourself. So without further ado, check out my Wes Anderson tribute style short. Jimmy, you were supposed to be at your sister's wedding an hour ago. They sent me here to pick you up. The ceremony starts in 30 minutes, and if you're not out that front door in five, I'm leaving without you. You better not be wearing that dumb blue shirt and sweatpants or I'm gonna lose it. Ha, ha, ha. 